Amen. Glory, glory. Give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Amen. Amen. We're certainly glad that we're able to come to you once again on this fabulous, beautiful Thursday here in Texas and California. Yes. Where certainly the Lord is moving extremely well. And uh, we're excited. I'm Pastor Ralph R. Houston Jr., along with my wife, Lisa uh, Houston. And we're going to be coming to you today with the same series we've been talking about. And uh, that series is going to go on until God said, until the people get it, until we recover things. And that's yeah. simply pursue, overtake, and recover all. And I believe this is a season of time where it's time for us to go after the vision, go after the things that God has promised you. I'm giving you some times where you can uh, let, like and share. Let everybody know that I'm yeah. on here. We are on. We're not on here because we don't have nothing else to do. We're on here because there's a word from heaven. It's a word from heaven that's been downloaded into our spirit to give you the revelation and the answer to the things that you have been praying about. I thank God that we're able to see another day that we've never seen before. Yes. So we ought to be giving God praise for that because yes. in that day, the Bible talks about there's a due season. You're in your due season. So yes. that's what I've been hearing that. I've been hearing it. Let me tell you again. You are in your due season. And don't listen to the lies. Do not listen to the lies. Somebody say, well, it can't happen because the way the economy is. It can't happen because of where your family is. It can't happen because of what's going on with COVID-19 and you know so forth and so on. But don't believe the lie. The Bible talks about all lies will have their part in the lake of fire. And right. Satan is the father of lies. So I want you to know if if there's a lie, don't believe it. And there's two languages that we got to keep in mind. There is the truth and there's a lie. I'd rather speak the truth than to speak the lie. Guard your ear gates. Remember that. Guard your ear gates. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive in. Uh, we got uh, uh, got a little bit more time. Can y'all hear my music in the back? I, I don't know if you can hear the music. Can you hear it? Can you hear Lady Houston? I can oh, hear it a little, just a little bit. All right. This one That's I want better. to hear. Huh? That's better. Lady says, can I have your attention? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Just a little bit of it. And we're going to go right into it. We're not going to be before any of you long. We just waited to more of you get on. Because I don't like to repeat, and uh, we know some are getting off work. Yeah. Lady Houston, do you have anything you want to add before we go into Oh, it? definitely. Um, we know that it's at a time right now where people are just getting off from work, or um, maybe they're uh, entering their cars or vehicles, and so um, they may not be able to watch, but they may want to at least listen in. Um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So we want to, we know that it's a period of transition in the evening and so we want everyone to be comfortable to um please like and share uh let us know that you're you're listening in it's okay to let us know that you're listening in we really appreciate it and um uh, we we find it a blessing and an honor that you uh want to join us on this evening and yeah. and dive more into the scriptures amen so yes, yeah. I'm excited about being able to stream this way. Uh, as you can see, this is our second time doing a partnership on uh, social media. Last week, on last Thursday, we used our cell phones to do to come in and do the lesson. And so on today, we're actually using our StreamYard uh, software so that Pastor Houston and I can teach side by side, even though we're not in the same state, it's like we're sitting side by side. So we're utilizing all the um, the uh, technology that's out there for us to use. And so we're just happy about being together here um, for the purpose of building the kingdom. Amen. For the purpose of building the kingdom. You know, you said purpose. And when we look at purpose, we all we hear that as a cliche a lot of times. What's your purpose in life? What's your purpose? And, you know, a lot of us come up with, I would say, so many off the top of the head answers. You know, uh, my purpose, I want to be a movie star. My purpose, I want to be rich. Right. My purpose, I want to have this. I want to do that. Yeah, those are 
Those are things right off the cuff. You just come up with it. But if you ever take the time to get into God, to the power of God, and get into the word of God, you will really find out your spiritual purpose. Your natural purpose is what you think in your mind. But your spiritual purpose comes from the word of God. And that's the thing the Bible says, he will grant you the desires of your heart. Yes. And later, what I'm finding out is that it's not just my heart. When I'm in the word of God, my heart and my mind has been renewed by the word. Right. And so the word, when I'm renewed by the word, the word is God. And I begin to feel God's heart. And in return, God lets me feel his purpose for me. Yes, yes. And I believe the body of Christ in this season, you need to understand what is your purpose for the kingdom, not so much the purpose of making yourself wealthy and rich, but how is it going to enhance the kingdom? Purpose is a very strong word. It's a very strong word. Yes. And I think, like I said, I think we use it loosely mm -hmm. and uh, we, we try to uh, escape from the work of purpose. There's works and purpose. If you don't put no works to, to the thing that God has called you, the Bible declares faith without works is what? Is is dead. And anything dead needs to be what? Buried. Okay, so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so in, 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 in reality, there's a lot of people in church that are clapping and dancing, but because they're not putting no faith, no works to their faith and their purpose, right. it's all in vain. Right. It's all right. in vain. And it's amazing. It's just amazing to me. I, I see it all the time where, you know, we're so in, in. And when you have purpose and you have work to your purpose and you have the faith in your works, when trouble comes, you don't quit. Right. I, 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 yes. You don't quit because it, it's, uh, it's a force that pushes you even in the midst of every storm. You know, and Lynn Houston, I, I know you can contest to that, you know, and when you was, you know, studying to be a nurse, you know, a lot of things happen. But you had a force in your purpose that allowed you to what? Continue. Continue. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Continue. Yeah, you have to continue. I mean, um, things are challenging these days. Um, and nothing that, you know, I remember hearing the words, you know, nothing that's uh, worth it is easy to come by. If it's right. worth it, it's not easy to come by. And so right. that means that you're going to have to work a little bit harder for that thing. Whatever that thing harder, is, yes. you have to work harder for it. And so yeah. um, it takes commitment and it takes some um, uh, perseverance through the storms. I remember times when, you know, I didn't want to study. I was tired of studying. I was overwhelmed. But I know that there was a greater purpose behind what I was studying. And Absolutely. that was it was a greater purpose. So on the other side. I was able to obtain once I went through all the all the pain, all the storms, all the tests, examinations, um, all the clinicals um, that helped to uh, grow a foundation within yes. me. And so when it was time to actually take my state boards, I was prepared. You know, I went through all of that for a reason. And then I was prepared to take my state boards. And then, you know, you take your state boards and if you do well, they will mail you your license. So in the end, it was all worth it. You know, you said prepared. We're going to, the, we're talking about those that are just getting on. We're still talking about pursue, overtake and recover all. Yes. And, you know, the, the movie star of this text we know is David. He is the star of the attraction here. And we know how David had been through so much, so much that many times that he wanted to go after the enemy, but he couldn't because God didn't give him permission right. to attack. There were times when they went to war and battle, but every time they went, David got authorization. It's amazing that David was being prepared for this particular event in time in his life, and not only his, but the church that was following him, his men that followed him. And not only did David get robbed, the people that followed him get robbed. That's why I want to encourage you, if you're in a, in a, in, in a place when you're following your leader, it seems like everybody is losing, it's only to recover, <laughs> it's only opportunity 
for you and for the leader in you to go back into the enemy's camp and take and back take what he stole. Because yes, everything amen. that you've been through was preparation. I'll say it again. Preparation. preparation for the fulfillment of the word of God. Watch this moving through you. Yes. Preparation. Amen. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we find a lot of people don't like the preparation stage. The, we call it the prep. The you know, prepping. my dad's a painter. And I used to go painting with them. And, uh, you know, I said, I would, I don't like painting, but I said, if I want to paint, let's start right now. And uh, my dad said, no, we got to prep the house first. So I got to prep the house. Just throw the paint on the walls. Let's get busy. Let's go. No, because we got to make sure we don't paint over something right. that doesn't need to be painted. Right. Okay. Right. Then we got to make sure that we cover things so we want to have a track record or any tracks of the paint at all because at the end of the job you're expecting to get what pay yes so we went through the prepping and i'm saying mm-hmm. the prepping took a long time the painting was easy it was the prepping that was the, the hardest part putting the tape down making sure it's all leveled and straight you couldn't have it going this way and that everything had to be straight so yes. when you painted that wall it had a straight line the wood wasn't tainted everything was right so prepping is the is the part that a lot of people don't want to deal with because that means you cannot get into your stuff substance until you start prepping it so when the substance come it won't taint anything that you have right all right i guess we're ready to go on yes yes we're ready to go on our first scripture of course is uh the 30th chapter in the first uh 30 chapter in the eighth verse of Samuel. Uh, do you have that, Lady Houston? I do. Samuel First 30. Samuel 30. Oh, no, Samuel 30. And, and verses uh, 8. And verse 8. Yes, read it. Okay. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And again, Great. we're still dealing with the topic pursue, overtake, and recover all. Yes. And so you for those of you who are maybe joining us for the first time, this is um New Fellowship Community Church in North Texas, the Hearst campus. Um, we have our Thursday night. Uh, Bible enrichment. And so you are joining us for our Thursday night Bible enrichment. And I uh, hope that you find something in it that will uh, bless you um, and help you in all the things that you're you're having to deal with as you're pursuing, overtaking and recovering all. So in First Samuel chapter 30, verse eight, the word of the Lord says, and David inquired at the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. There's some key uh, points in there. First, he inquired, he asked, he sought the Lord out. He went, he, he got out of his pain, his hurt, his madness, and he began to talk to God. A lot of times we want to talk to God and we're angry. Right. Calm it down. Calm it down. Take a deep breath. Say, Lord, okay. It happened. I can see, oh, David, I can react it. When he first came in, my God, he probably had the greatest attitude ever. Any of you ever got to that, well, experienced that, where things happen and your attitude pops out? I mean, it's like a firecracker. There it is. Yes. But David inquired, and you have to come to God in such a manner. I think we we lose the res- sometimes we lose the respect of God because we come to him as if he's a man. Right. We come to, is, come to him as if he's a person. He is a God. He is yes. our God, the Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of all creation. Yes. Yes. And so there's none before him and none after him. After so him. He, he is he is re- in reverence to have the great attitude because God knew they were coming in before you got home. Yes, yes. God knew it was going to be an attack when you got to work. Right. God knew it was going to be an attack uh, when you went to church. Whatever the, the, where the attack came from, God already knew. But he wants to make sure that when you come to him, you're not coming to him 
with the attitude of what happened, but you're coming to, coming to him with the gratitude that you survived and now you have, you're getting the author, authorization to go get your stuff. So he inquired of the Lord. Point two, Lady Houston, you can pick up from here. He never once went to the men that experienced the same thing he experienced. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you want to get on the phone and call Susie Joy, Joy and, and Busybody. We call all these people and they are willing to listen, but they're also willing to talk about what happened. And, and they don't have the power to help you go get anything. They do have the power to side with you on the problem. So to make you feel like, okay, you have some support emotionally. You need to call on Jesus. Somebody say, call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. <laughs> David, David did not call on any of the men. He called on the Lord. Tell me an experience that you may have, uh, Lady Houston, where things happen. And you had to call on God because you couldn't call on even you couldn't even call on me. The times when you got times you got to call on God. Mm -hmm. He is the author, the finisher of our faith. And so, there, you yes, you do have something you might want to add on that. Well, I, I I wanted to touch on the part where you said that sometimes what we want to do is call a friend, and you know, yeah. um. Because it seems like the it, sometimes that seems like the easiest and the closest thing, and I think it's because as as humans we're tangible people, and yeah. when something happens, we 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 like to touch. We we want to be able to have uh, a be able to to reach out to someone, and so it's easier to pick up the phone or go visit the neighbor or get in your car and go to your sister's house or a friend's house when something happens. It's just right, that's a right. human nature thing because we're tangible relational people and so we tend to do those things but then you know I found in my journey as a, in this particular in my journey as a Christian that it is you know it's it may be okay to talk to a friend because a friend can listen um, right. but in this in this in this verse David was inquiring so sometimes we, they, the, the person you call may not have the ability for you to inquire because you're going to probably get all kinds of different versions of what you should and shouldn't do. And so that call that you make will be for the person to listen and maybe they can sometimes off the fly cuff tell you what they think you should do in a situation. But as Christians, we I, it's important for us to know that God is first and we need to choir of the Lord because that's where our power comes from you know yeah. you know we're relational and I think sometimes we need to twit turn that around our relationship first needs to be with God first and he allows us to have friendships that's and right. relationships with families but he wants to be first and so sometimes I think when things don't don't work out like we want it to work out in our lives is because we put other things first. We should have went to God first. So, yeah, I was just thinking when you talked about calling and talking to people, you know, they you can talk to them. But when it is a, ser a, a severe, a serious problem, you need to inquire of the Lord. That's going deeper when you inquire. You say, God knows this is what's happening to me. This is what's before me. God, I don't know what yes. to do. So it's inquiring, and as this word is deeper, it's a deeper word. It's like I've lost my 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 best friend. You know that my best friend has died from COVID. Okay, so I I need to go deeper. There's really nothing that another friend can tell me about that. I have to right, deal with that right. pain and the grief and the loss of someone that was dear and close to me. And the only person that can heal that, that can give me direction, is God. That's true. The only one. The only one that can heal that yes. is God. And you said something. There are those times when you'll go to that person that you trust. But in this season right here, let's make it easy. Let's go to God. Go to God. And he'll tell you First. who you can call. He'll tell you who you can share with. He'll reveal it. He's a revealer to add all things. Yes. And we got to let God do his work. And then he'll tell us how to do our works. So David, David had to went to God. He had to go to God mm -hmm. and he asked very specific questions. Uh, and one, well, what was the first one he asked? He said, shall I pursue? Shall I? Shall I? Shall we? <laughs> he 
He said, shall I pursue them? Mm -hmm. As a leader, shall a I leader. pursue them? Because he knew if I pursue, mm -hmm. I know that the ministry is going to come with me. Yes, yes, okay? yes. I'm that was a key word, God. Pastor. That huh? was key. It's key. That was so key when you say, he said, shall I? I think we missed that. Yeah. You know, he did come to God, but he specifically said, shall I pursue? That's right. And that was right. because of his leadership role. He's his over leadership. all of the army. Yes. And that's why at NFCC, one of the things that God has placed in my heart is to develop strong leadership, to mm -hmm. let them know that wherever we may go through, whatever may happen, you got to remember, we are the team. Yes. And whatever God is telling us, telling the pastor to do and to go after, I'm not going only to get my stuff, but we're going to get your, your stuff. stuff. And we have the backing of the Holy Spirit, the backing of the anointing of God, and God has paved the way so we can get it. So he said, shall I? Then what shall I? I? And he said, shall I pursue after this truth? Uh -huh. So he was real specific. This truth which were the yeah. Amalekites. Not the other enemies that he fought before. Mm -hmm. He went after the thief. <laughs> Go ahead. And then he said, shall I overtake them? So he no. said, shall I pursue? That uh -huh. was a specific question. Then he talked about who after this truth. And then shall I overtake them? He didn't say, shall I go to fight them? Mm -hmm. Shall I go make a man? Yes. Shall I go tell them what I think? He was very specific. He was very Let's specific. Because I can't get what I want until I what? Overtake them. That means I'm going in not with my own strength, but I'm going in with your strength, Lord. Yes. And if I'm going in with God's strength, no weapon formed against you or me shall prosper. Yes. So David had an insight. I want to help you keep developing that insight with God so you can recover the things that God wants you to have. Yes, it's not yes. his will that you go without for the rest of your life. There will be a season where you have to uh, have faith and believe, but the Bible says in due season, he'll begin to give you the things that he, that he, that he promised you. Promise. So you got to know now we're in a what? Due season. Due season. All right. I, I want to go, uh, as we're not going to go to the, strip, the scripture on it, but as they pursued, they met an Egyptian. On the way there, my favorite the part. <laughs> That's my. <laughs> and the Egyptian had took sick prior to the attack that the enemy had, had went on and caused on David's kingdom, and they left him behind. And the Egyptian was the one who helped him based on what David gave to him. Right. Now let's reenact that. I get robbed. My men are weary. The Take my family. Me. Yes. And God, I asked God, what shall I do? And then he says, go and pursue. And he says, okay, overtake and recover everything. I get up. I find out who's ready. And the thing was I had about four to six hundred men. I think six hundred, six hundred uh, men, and four hundred went on you. forward because two hundred fainted. Two hundred fainted, mm -hmm. and he took the lesser and went into the camp. On the way there, I can imagine the men are saying, "We're going to get our stuff." Boy, I can see that they're bub they're bubbling right now. Man, God, yeah, I'm going to pick. Uh -uh, they done took my stuff, and they're yeah. visualizing how to get this stuff to the enemy. And when they got, before they got to the camp, God had purpose in front of them. Yes. Egyptian was the purpose. And it, here's the point. The Bible says David gave to the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. He fed him. Gave, gave him water. Gave him water. Mm -hmm. Gave him things that he didn't have. Yes. And the man was so grateful because his their, his master was the one that robbed David, mm -hmm. and who and left him? him, and then he left him. The master and left, left him. Left him sick. Yes, left him for it dead, as they David's say. His purpose mm -hmm. to get the stuff. His purpose 
was to get that young man back to where God wanted him to be. Because the Bible declared his spirit regained. He regained his spirit based on the love and kindness that David showed him. David couldn't have had an attitude. David yes. could have been angry. Oh, you're connected to this man. And David asked the question, to whom you belong to? And the man didn't lie. He told him who he belonged to. Yes. Well, after he did that, uh, Lady Houston, the table changed. Yes, yes. Things changed. Yes. So, you know, uh, what's your take on that part? Um, I'm, I'm always thinking of the physical, you know, because I'm a nurse. I'm always, I always go there. And when you think about this Egyptian being sick and left on the road to on the roadside to die, you know, you kind of, you know, you you know, you can at least feel where he may imagine where he, he may have been in his mind. And when someone yeah. comes along and they take they take care of that basic need that you have, you know, um, and gives you the energy back. So I can see this Egyptian getting getting all of his energy back. He was probably starving, you know, and he was in pain. Maybe all he needed was a meal and someone to care. And yeah. just that meal and that caring hand. And then they even gave him desserts because the workers said they gave him fig cake. So, you know, David was generous to, with him. And so that was what he needed to kind of restore him. And that's sometimes the way we are. Sometimes we we just need sometimes someone to to feed us, you know, to to be oh, kind yeah. to us and yeah. to show us uh, care, you know, and kindness. And sometimes that turns everything around. Sometimes when we're feeling down, hopeless, helpless, just that loving kindness from someone a stranger can provide it. That's and that was right. David was a stranger to him. Yes. And. Then that's when everything started. Once yeah. he was able to, I see this Egyptian, he was recovering himself. He was also in pursuing. He was also overtaking. He was also recovering. So he, at, at this point, had recovered, you know, from the state that he had been in. It said for like three days or three nights. That's right. That's a long time <laughs> to be knowing that you're sick and to recover and be cast out and left right. behind. Right. And, and the, and the, and the, the, the people that he was part of, they were in another place. So actually yes. he was ostracized from them. He was sent away from them. Put away. Put thrown away. away. You hear what I'm saying? The people that God's going to connect you with is people that have been thrown away. People that just want to be loved. Right. You might be wanting to get your stuff, but in the purpose of getting your stuff, on the way to get your stuff, there's a soul there. That God wants you to minister to. That God wants you don't forget your assignment. Yes. Remember, the assignment was not to get stuff. He said, pursue, overtake, and recover all. It wasn't overtaking re over everything that he lost. It was recovering what that man lost. Yes, yes. It was giving that man back what he lost. Yes, yes. It wasn't the stuff. It was the spirit of God being placed back into that man. And because he did that, then David began to ask, where are they? <laughs> he said, where, they, where are they? I'm going to get them now. I have permission. Yes. But my assignment has been fulfilled. I want to help you as you go. Fulfill the assignment. Don't look at the materialistic things that you may lose. I know COVID-19 is in. And finances are low. They're cutting down the unemployment. They, they, you know, money that's not coming in like it used to. Businesses are not... Uh, they're closing down, but I can create a credit. Your business won't close now. Uh, you know, people are not going out spending like they used to. Yes. But I decree and declare that whatever God said about you, on the way to get your stuff, there's a soul that you got to reach. Yes. There, yes. Somebody need to hear the love of God. Somebody need to hear how to come back to Christ. The message in this year. Is bringing souls to the kingdom of God, restoring them so they can recover. You know, and Houston, let's go to the scripture. Uh, I want I want to give you some scriptures based on recovering. And Jeremiah is the prophet. The prophet. That's amazing. And as we read and study in our in our uh, text, we always go into the prophetic. The prophets, the major and the minor, they seem to have such great insight in regards to the topic and the season that we're in. 
So Jeremiah 29, verse 11 and 13. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 and 13. And when you have it, I'll wait I for a while. I do, yes. I had it on the message Bible. So I'm, um, you said 11 through 13. So now I'm in King James. All right. Okay, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Right. Thoughts right. of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Verse okay, 12. There. Okay. Stop there. He knew the thoughts before the anger got there. Yes. Before they robbed you or before COVID came in, God, that's how amazing it is. He knew your thought process. Who wouldn't want to serve a God that knows my thoughts before the season comes into? Yes, Master. amen. That's a powerful God. Yes, you don't have yes. to be out of your mind not to want to serve a God that knows your thoughts before the trouble comes. Yes, and he amen. said, I know the thoughts that I've already thought of you. In other words, I conclude this matter. <laughs> yes. I've made a conclusion to this. You may thought you were in trouble, you're lost. I got a conclusion to everything. The Bible said the steps of a righteous man have been ordered by God. Lady Houston, what gets me is that we don't understand even in our bad steps, God through the thoughts. That's why some of us are still here today. Because God said he had the conclusion in the thought process. You want to add anything to that before we go to? Uh, oh, no, you're, you're doing good. You're doing okay, good. Go ahead. And then verse 12 says, then shall ye call upon me. And ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will right. hearken unto you. And right. 13 says, and ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Don't search for him based on the situation. Yeah. That word search is to worship. Mm. To worship him. David was a, 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 a professional worshiper. And his worship abilities came was uh, through the practice uh, through the events of trials and tribulations, adversities. David had uh, developed such a relationship with God that the stronger the adversities, the stronger the problems, his worship was increased. His worship, I want to help you. When you pray, just don't pray. Pray to praise and praise to worship. I'll say it again. Pray to praise and praise to worship. It's good to pray, but now you need a washing. Hey, shout out. Amen. You need God. You That's need good. a warning washing. And after you get that washing, now you need to lay down and worship God and let him breathe. Breathe new life into you. It's not a thank you. It's a love you. And David began to, to sort out God. And he knew, and the reason why, Lady Houston, because the Bible said he already knew the thoughts. The thoughts. The thoughts. He already had a conclusion to your matter. COVID-19 can't stop you unless you deviate from the conclusion of what God has already spoken. Uh, you want to add some more to that before I go to the next one? Oh, no. That's good. Zechariah 9 and 12. Zechariah 9 and 12. We're talking about the prophets, majors and the minors now. Zechariah 9 and 12. Okay. I thank God for this opportunity. Where are we in time? Okay. I want to make sure we're in the right time. Um, glory to God. Glory, glory to God. God. I love God that much. I love him. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> yes, glory Jesus. Zechariah nine and twelve. I'm trying to continue, but there's something about God's presence. You know, yes. when he uh, that word when he said, I knew the thoughts. I knew the thoughts. In other words, I know that I got the conclusion. Mm -hmm. I got the conclusion to the matter. My God, I got the answer. It's already fixed. So Somebody right. told me a long time ago it's a fixed fight. Mm -hmm. Somebody put on the screen, I tell yourself it's a fixed fight. It's fixed that you will win. All right, let's go on. I, I can't stay there. Let's go on. <laughs> Zechariah 9, 9 and 12. 12. It says, turn you to the stronghold. Uh -huh. Ye prisoners of hope. Even today. Minute. Prisoner of what? Hope. Of hope. Go on. Prisoners of hope. Even today uh -huh. do I declare that I will render double unto thee. 
somebody ought to give God praise right there. <laughs> oh yes. my God. Listen, God is simply saying, because I got the, the conclusion to the matter of the situation that you're in in this season, even though they got another variance coming in, and yes, it's real. I want y'all to know it's real. Right. They got you know, first natural, then spiritual. Take care of yourself. Watch some things. But through it all, your blood bought. Yes. I want to teach a balanced ministry. I don't want you to be going around trying to lay hands on stuff and speaking in tongues, and you, you know, you're not washing, you're not doing the things that your mother and father have taught you to do. Right. All right. Take care of this temple because it's the only temple you know. But through it all, as you make it through this season, God is simply saying, I know the thoughts. I know the finishing product. Right. But he said, I'm going to declare and restore to you not just what you got. Mm. Not just what you lost. Yeah. Not what you thought you had. Yeah. Yes. But I'm about to give you devil for your trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm about mm -hmm. to give the devil a headache because he took one percent I'm about the devil that one percent. <laughs> mm. and, and that's why the devil don't want you to seek God. The Bible says, "Seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom of the God, kingdom of the God, kingdom of God, and, and his, his righteousness. righteousness, and all of these things will be added." Be added. I don't know about you, Lady Houston. Mm. I believe I, what I do know about you. You want the addition. To the things that God has promised you, not just the addition, but the double portion. Jesus. Yes, it seems cliche. You know, when people say, I want what God promised me, yes, not yes, what yes. that's better than anything I ever would ever want for myself. <laughs> I yeah. want what God promised me. That's not being Good. selfish. I think sometimes we're going to think about God, what He promised me is better than anything that I will want for myself. And the beauty of that is, Lady Houston, when God promised things to you, you got to understand the adversary yes. heard the promise. Yes. Yes. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. knowledge. You got to understand when God, because it's a spirit, God is a spirit, yes. Satan is a spirit. And when God spoke it, the host of uh, 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 of demons heard the word and so they went out was sent out to plot out against you so that you would change your thinking and consequently you change your heart yes. that yes. the promise will miss you why because you moved out the way right God has, God has sent it to you but it does not have auto drive in other words, mm -hmm. it's directed straight to where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. If you move out of that direction, it will bypass you. Mm. That's why we have to stay in line right. with the word. Right. With the word. Stay in line with the vision that God has given you. Yes. If you're a family, you've got to stay in line right. with whatever, whatever God says. Right. So devil portion. I need somebody to praise God because you're about to get a devil portion right I'm now. I'm getting it. You're about to get a devil portion. Yes. You had to, you had to been robbed Ooh. to get devil. Devil's increase. It's not God's will just to give you what you lost. He right. wants to show you I'm bigger and better than what you lost. You want to add to that while I get my next scripture? Yeah, I want what God is. Like I said, I, I just, I'm just where I'm still on. I want what God has promised me. Yes. And what yes. he promised me is it's double. It's double, double. <laughs> and, it's but amazing. I also, need to and we all need to make sure that we're in relationship with him because the scripture is clear you need to seek God first yes yes that's seek that's plain God. that's just that's basic seek God first in everything you, know, you said a mouthful and, and I probably won't be liked when I say this uh oh oh well <laughs> you know prophets are not trying to be liked I just wanted to give the word well that's the truth uh, a lot of times we build up the man of God and we say that he's anointed by God right. so we have to reverence that man 
And we have to be careful. And that man is this. And that man is that. And that man is this. And that man is that. And that man is this. And get to the point where where is he God? He becomes Lord. Yeah, he, he becomes, becomes Lord. Yes. That he are she? The Lord of your life. He or she? It could be a she. Yeah. Just as much as it's a, and most, and sometimes a lot of times it's a she. You know, yeah. Yeah. and that person is built so high that yeah. it's almost as if they're untouchable, which is which is really ridiculous because we're all human. You can't say you're so so high that you're untouchable, you know, uh, and that you know everything is about you, and yes. yeah. you, you speak and as not. if you know we are all vessels, and we yes. we all God we're, we're servants of God, and He's a, He's assigned us yes. as shepherds. The, yes. the Bible is clear; we are shepherds, and so we're supposed to lead the sheep, but we're That's not supposed right. to lead the sheep astray to a point where they could be teetering on. Uh, uh, idolatry uh, as they hold that person in such high esteem yes, that they can't yes. fall down. Yes. And that's not good for anybody. It's not good for the person no. <laughs> or, the, or the other person that's involved no. to have someone so high that if they fall, that I mean, it's it's almost like, you know, we got to die because this happened to them. You know, that shouldn't have happened to them. But we are still mere men. You, you cannot be, we, there, no, there's no one that is Lord over no people. one, no one. No there one. is no pastor, no apostle, no, prophet, no pastor, no evangelist. You are not Lord. We're not yes, Lord. I said it. You are not, not Lord. a Lord. You are not a God. You're you are vessels. not a God. Mm -hmm. You're just a man that walks in a title. Mm -hmm. I think God, my apostle, Apostle Campbell, mm -hmm. does not walk around like he's a God. He understands his title was given from heaven right? and right. he represents the title and he moves in the power of God, not for showmanship. Ooh, I and it's that. true apostolic. It's yeah, true, it apostolic. True, apostolic. true apostolic. True apostolic. You know, and, and he doesn't want people to lift him up. He doesn't mm -hmm. want people to, to acknowledge him as if he's so great. I mean, he's just as, you know, he's natural, he's down to earth, but because of who he is, you respect his position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Position. And God elevates him. And God elevates him. So we lift up Apostle Campbell right now. Yes, yes. Praise. I lift we up that for. man of God because that man, he understands the prerequisite of being a real apostle of God. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and I'm yes. not putting him above God. I'm recognizing the power of God that's in him. That calling that he has. That's in him. He's chosen. But he was chosen. He was chosen to do mm -hmm. this, but he doesn't go around conflicting, conflicting mm -hmm. people out of anger, out of disappointment. Mm -hmm. No. You know, Lisa, right. I have, I'm talking to a guy today. He said, I learned two things this year. And I said, what? He said, I learned to stay out of somebody else's business and keep them out of my business. Oh, okay. <laughs> I said, okay, that's good. Stay in my business and keep them out of my business. Out of my business. And, and when that's you do good. That, you don't have to worry about the thoughts of people. You don't that's worry good. about what they're doing. Listen, because at the end of the day, God will reveal. God will reveal what's truth. Because my old grandmother used to say, the truth always wins. Mm. The truth always the truth wins. always wins. It never loses. Mm -hmm. It never loses. And Satan, watch this, Satan can increase you as well. So mm -hmm. I say, no, we can't. You got people in the world, singers, uh, uh, basketball players, all these people, they're not of God, but their abilities got them in and, and they can get all the money they need. You know, you look at, a, a, I'm just going to stay a little bit here. You look at a basketball player, uh, you look at a football player, a baseball player, they don't make it if you don't condition yourself. If you don't condition yourself, they don't make it. I'm going to say it again. If there's no condition, there's no make it. Even the world know in order to make it, you have to follow the conditions to make it. Right. The only people in the church that don't want to follow, don't want to condition their faith, but yet they want to make it. They want to wake up one day and everything is done. Hmm. It doesn't it's work that like way. That. It doesn't work that way. So if you really want to know 
what true Christianity is. Read the word of God. Yes. Without manipulation. I told you I'm not going to be like, I don't care. Without manipulation, but read it with anticipation that God is going to speak to you. Yes, you. He will speak to you. He will speak to you. All right, let's move on because I can stay there. That's good. Uh, let's go to uh, Joel 2.25. We're dealing with prophets again. Something about the prophets. The, the prophets are going crazy in this <laughs> I'm telling you, God is opening their mouths. They're not caring about what anybody thinks because I would be in disobedience if I don't speak what thus says the Lord. And watch this. I have to say everything in love. I don't come to condemn. I don't come to do none of that. Because that's not God. The Bible says you don't condemn. I don't pray death on you. I don't I don't disregard you because I got to love you. I got to love you in spite of what you may have done, in spite of what you may have said. We have to love you and you have to love them. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go. and says Joel 225. What does it say? OK, Joel 225 says, and I will restore to you the hey! years, <laughs> the years that the locusts had eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm make yeah. my great army, which I sent to you. All those, uh, it, 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 give me Genesis uh, uh, 126. Genesis 126. God bless everyone that song. God bless. Double portion yes. for every one of you. Double portion. I decree and declare double portion for you. Double portion. Matter of fact, let's take it a step further. Triple fold. My God. Triple, triple fold. For triple you. fold. Triple. Yes, yes, yes. Triple fold. No, why play with it? Why play with it? Get everything that God promised you. Receive everything that God has for you. Don't take the lesser. Self settle. Don't compromise. Don't settle. Because Don't God settle. has the conclusion to the matter. Yes, All right, let's read on Okay, Genesis 1 and 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. Yeah. After our uh -huh. likeness, and let them have dominion over the yes. fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth Stop. upon the earth. Every what? Creeping. Creep. <laughs> what do you think the locust is? <laughs> yes. A creepy thing. What's been robbing God's people? Creepy people. Creepy things. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> oh God! Hanging around creepy people. Creeping says all over all the the earth and over every creeping every creeping thing that creeped creepy upon thing. the earth. Every it mean, didn't he got his word. He was he wasn't like saying oh well creepy men or creepy he's or creepy bugs or creepy snakes and he said creep every. <laughs> Every creeping thing that creepeth mm -hmm. upon the earth. Every creepy thing. You know, and when we I have dominion at, over. When we look at creepy things, I look at snakes. Yeah. Bugs, spiders. Bugs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, lizards. Yeah. I look at people who are so slick and slick in your life, and they get you to think a certain way contrary to the word of God, but they use the word to trick you. To trick you. That's the twisted scriptures. The twisted twisting the word. Twisted it. My for a specific God. for an occasion. And you and you it's clear because it's for an occasion. And it's to get a certain reaction. That's the thing that gets me. You you're not it, it doesn't come like well you know God has given you a word but you you grab a word that's specific to the issue to get a move or an action to occur. To occur. And it's it's generally pretty obvious. Yes. It, it's uh, I've seen it across the board, across the nation that we all want to be such wonder workers as right. leaders. How about just being faithful? How about just being loved? For real. Let your reasonable service be the thing that people yes. know. Just yes. the reasonable things. Because God already has to you know the thoughts. He has the conclusion to every matter 
of your life. And I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to prophesy that you rejoice in the conclusion of what you're going through. I don't want any accolades. I want you to get, I want you. Me and Lady Houston want to see you yes. excel. Excel greater than what we are. Excel. Yes. Excel. Greater. Excel than where greater. We are. Greater. Okay. Because if you're not excelling, Houston, we got a problem. So I want to make sure that I'm teaching you and showing you the prerequisite and the application to excel, not just to where we are, but above us. Yes. Above us. Because we're just a platform for you to stand on. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah. Genesis, he told us we got dominion. I want to help you. You got dominion. You got dominion. All you got to do is speak it. Speak it till it hurts. Oh, I love that. It may hurt you because you've been doing it for so long. Yes. And your mind and your heart and your body is used to that thing. But if you can start speaking freedom to it, I got to get out of it. I got to leave. I got to go. It's not conclusive to where I am right now. I got to change my company. I got to change who I'm around right. in order to get the conclusion to the matter of the things that I'm in. Right. Okay. Here the prophet is saying to us again, all of those creepy things, mm -hmm. I cancel every creepy spirit that's coming over your life. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood you of cancel Jesus. that assignment. Every creepy thing that's trying to come into your life. Yes, Jesus. Cancel that Cancel it in the name of Jesus. Diabolical spirits that's trying to come in the into name your of family, Jesus. to your job. Yes, I Jesus. take my rightful authority as a prophet of God. Yes, Jesus. And I speak cancellation. Cancellation. In your life. In cancellation. In cancellation. Yes, because God. I'm in high pursuit. Yes, I'm Lord. And we're recovering. And we're covering it all. We're recovering. Double for all your trouble. Double. Double. You want to add any more to that, babe, before we go on? No, you're, it's good. It's good. Let's go to Isaiah 126, and we're almost through. While you're going there, I want you guys to get your hearts ready to give. I, I don't push offerings, but I really need you to give. I want to challenge you. Don't challenge God, but challenge you. This ministry is a ministry that's moving in the power of God. I'm telling you, God is sending in workers. He's sending in pastors. He's sending in evangelists. I mean, suddenly these light afflictions are just for a moment. But we need you to give. And when you give, it will be given back to you. That's what the It will be says. given back to you. Not to us, mm -hmm. but to Good. you. So mm -hmm. I want you to give. You can give by way of PayPal. I think they're gonna they might put it on the screen later. Uh, PayPal, or you can give by way of Cash App, or you can send it to our physical address, seven five zero Pipeline Court, in the city of Hearst, Texas. And if California, you're listening to this, you can send your seed to six zero one San Pablo Town Center in San Pablo, California. I believe that this ministry is good ground. I have to believe it. We have sown and God has blessed us. God has tremendously blessed, blessed us and he's not finished yet. And we only can tell you this because we, we're we doing it. We are, we are uh, acquiring of God on how, and God said the only way to do it is to sow a seed. So I invite you, I encourage you to say, you know what, tonight I'm going a, I'm to a sow a seed, $10, 10000 100 Somebody can give $100 right now. You know what? Just give it. Don't think about it. I'm going to sow this because the man of God spoke from the word of God. And the word of God said, I need to get in pursuit. I got permission authority. The word of God said I should recover. The word of God said in the process of recovering, people that I know that are lost out there will be recovered and regain the spirit of God upon them. Listen, this is your seed that you're planting in your belief. So we encourage you to give. Amen. It's on the screen. We encourage you to give it. All right. We got one more verse. And uh, we got like three minutes, ladies. You want know someone to add? Oh, no. Uh, you said it was Isaiah? Isaiah 126. Isaiah 126. It's our last scripture. Okay. Give Please. me one moment. Time by so fast. We're not out of word, but we're running out of time. Amen. <laughs> 
one in 26. I'm on my way there. That's all right. I'm going to okay. read my version first, and then you read yours, all right? Okay. I will restore your judges as at the first, and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterwards, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Okay, read your verse, version. Okay, I think I, I think we had the same version. But okay. let me go to um, the Christian Standard Bible. Let's see what it says. Okay. Um, it says, verse 26 says, I will restore your judges to what they once were and uh -huh. your advisors to their former state. Right. Afterward, you will be called the righteous city, a faithful city. That's the Christian Standard Version. Right. Um, the Amplified Version says, then I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. After Afterward, you will be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Yes. So that's somebody telling me if I can take it a step further. Wherever you wherever you are, are dwelling in, whatever city you're in, your city has favor for you. Wherever you go, who's ever over a certain city, over circumstances or things in your life, God is getting ready to grant them what you are looking for. Yes. Decisions are about to come into your favor. All right. I got a little bit of time. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah, my last one. Jeremiah 30 and 17. This is for you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but this is for you. Glory to God. My God. God is good. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 30, 30 and 17. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm getting there. For I will restore health to you. Stop. COVID cannot take you out. The Bible tells us I will restore what? Health, health to, to you. What? Uh huh. And I will heal your wounds, said the Lord, uh -huh. because because they have called you an outcast, saying, yeah. "This is Zion. No one seeks her, and no one cares for her." Listen. There's been situations where you've been hurt, situations where you have perhaps our loved ones have gotten ill, gotten sick. It might be some who passed away. But let me tell you, you're not here to mourn, but you're here to declare the yes. life of Jesus Christ. Yes. You're here to excel in the word of God so that their memory their life would not be in vain, but it would be in uh, in such blessing to the generation of people or the group of people that you are, are around. Remember, you are the next light and the only light that they will see as you begin to, as God begin to restore you. You got to declare your health is good. Yes. I prophesy good health in this season. Yes. I yes. prophesy. Yes. You are already healed. Yes. Yes. Whatever sickness was trying to come in your body, I you am healed. That climate, cancel it. Be gone. Be gone. You can't stay in this body. You can't stay in their mind. Anxiety, you gotta go. Mental issues, you gotta go. You cannot stay in God's kingdom because the house of God has the blood of Jesus all around it, and we represent. Jesus. So listen, yes, yes. be encouraged. Let you want to pick up with anything? No, um, I just think it was a great Bible study. And um, I think it just kind of brings in everything that we've been ministering on Sundays. Yeah. Um, that it's just, it's so much more to pursuing and overtaking and recovering it all. And yeah. we're using David's story, particularly in, in chapter 30 of 1 Samuel, because uh, it is as a representative of the things that we're going through. He, his life, he's a, he was such a he was such a human being. <laughs> David was such a human being. Yes. And there are so many other people in the Bible, but I don't think there's anything that he had tapped into that we didn't tap into. You know, people 
because he was such a person, he he was a man after God's own heart. But he's also a man, just like we're also yeah. women. So we we make mistakes. We're not perfect, but he knew how to go after God, and he knew who to. Who he knew who to seek. It wasn't he wasn't seeking Saul. He could have sought Saul. He didn't seek Saul, and he could have sought his dad and his brothers, but he Uh didn't. And so I just I love I just love dealing with this particular chapter. It has enhanced me. It has opened up my mind. And I'm and our thing is that you know God is he's using us to be able to to um, extract this word so that it could be meaningful to you as well we want it to mean something to you um because it's not we're just in a a season now that people want real we want to see real and they want to know how how did you make it how did you do it and we're using someone here in the bible to express all of those things a real man who went through it and that came out it okay and so um I'm just thankful for the ex- excellent Bible study. Thank you for allowing me to stand beside you uh, no, here in social you media. Don't. <laughs> yes, amen. And then I want to, I see, you know, I've been here doing some of the scriptures, and so I haven't been able to maneuver as much on the, uh, the computer here, but there are a lot of people online from our California location. So I want to say thank you for joining us. I miss you guys. And bless you. And then we have some people here from Texas on the line as well. And so um, we just thank you for your support. And we're just praying that God continues to elevate each and every one of you. Elevate you. Elevate everyone in your family. Uh, Every situation, let it be increased in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's that's what we want. Listen, we love you with the love of Christ. We do have to go. But remember... Go get your stuff and Go recover get your everything. Stuff. Recover everything that God promised you, and stop okay. tripping, because He already got the conclusion to the matter. Remember, it's a fixed fight. Yes. Go with God. Amen. Yes.